Hello and welcome to this uh, relatively short video on custom grid layouts. Now, in the previous tutorial, we talked about the uh, the custom layouts that were uh, included for GM drums and Digisticks. But now, in uh, in this latest version, we can replace this piano roll uh, with any custom layout we choose. And I want to go over how to create them uh, in this video with you today. So to access your default layouts and custom uh, layouts, uh, you can tap and hold on the grid button and you'll see here the two uh, layouts that we discussed in a previous tutorial for GM drums and for Digistix uh, drum uh, machine. And uh, below that you'll see that there's a custom layout option and in there you can see I've got a number of custom layouts that are there ready for us to load. But how do you create a custom layout? Well, it's actually quite simple and it doesn't require any external editors to do so. Just uh, tap on the menu button and pick the edit layout option. Now you should see a little floating window appear and I'm going to press the new button to create a new layout. I'm just going to give it a name, test for now. Now once uh, the new layout has been created, the layout name appears in this dialog. Um, as you can see here, it defaults to uh, 127 MIDI notes starting from 0 up to 127 and we need to limit that. So to impose a limit on the number of keys available, you adjust the start note, uh, the start note being the lowest MIDI note you want on display and then adjust the note count to cover the number of notes that you want in your uh, custom layout. Um, and you'll see now on that left hand bank we have limited the range uh, to just 24 notes starting from MIDI note 36. Now once you're happy with the range of notes you then have to give each note a meaningful name or description and to do that you use this MIDI note selector to select the note you want to rename and then hit the edit description button on the right and that will present you with a dialogue allowing you to assign a relatively short uh, description but if you do that for each of the notes in turn uh, you can define your layout. Now for the purpose of this demonstration I'm just going to apply a, a short description to the first three or four of these uh, notes and then just show you how you uh, complete the uh, saving process and uh, how you select these custom uh, layouts. So I think that's just about it. So what you're going to have to do now is once you've completed that uh, naming process, uh, press the uh, save button at the bottom of the dialog and just save your changes. Now if I close that uh, floating window and long press on the grid uh, layout button I can switch back to the default piano roll. Now if we go back to that grid layout uh, menu and select custom layout we can now pick the custom layout we just designed and you can see at the bottom of the screen the uh, labels that we assigned just a few minutes ago. Now if you find yourself needing to delete a layout you can do so from the uh, load custom layout dialog uh, just by swiping left to right and picking the delete button. And also uh, we can back up files from that dialog too. If we uh, open up the files, the file explorer within uh, iOS and find a suitable location um, you can open this dialog and then just drag and drop files from here uh, into the files app for backup purposes and you can drag and drop them back into that window too to restore them. So that just about covers uh, custom grid layouts. Uh, so now I want to turn my attention to a new editing tool. This one's specifically designed for editing controllers and it's the curve tool. Now if we open the controller lane and uh, take a look at the uh, list of edit tools available you'll notice there is no curve tool here because we're currently editing velocities. Now the curve tool was specifically written for handling something like pitch bend 
which is one of those awkward things that's hard to do by hand. So if you change to the pitch bend controller and take a look at the list of uh, editing tools, you can see we've now got the curvature tool. Now in order for you to see this more clearly, I'm going to long press on the controller button and expand the controller lane height. Uh, I'm also going to turn on the additional toolbar just so that we've got some uh, guides uh, at the bottom of the screen. Now with this curve tool selected, if I drag a selection left to right or right to left, you'll see that a curve is drawn. Um, so what it does, it snaps to those uh, vertical lines you can see on the grid. And I started drawing there from bottom left <clears throat> and I finished at bottom left. I'm starting here from top right and dragging a selection and then slowly um, moving my cursor down the screen on my finger. So it allows you to actually create curves that snap to these guides. Here I'm using, uh, I'm dragging from the midline and as you can see uh, the curves are all originate from that midline. Um, so you can actually get different types of curves depending on where you start and stop the dragging uh, process. Now there are additional options available to you if you uh, start the dragging process and then tap on the curve tool while your fingers uh, on the screen you'll get a list of additional uh, options up on screen including a curve mode uh, which uh, can be either ease in out in or out and that controls the curve type now if the curve mode is set to in out we can also adjust the frequency here uh, which uh, allows us to do some uh, pitch bend type effects um, just by hitting that uh, uh, button several times um, we can also uh, alter the phase of that curve so that the start and end point are more centered around uh, the central point of this graph which is required if we're editing uh, pitch bend and we can also adjust the intensity of the uh, number of uh, controller points within this uh, from this uh, pop-up toolbar. Now that's quite an extreme pitch bend because usually it's two, plus or minus uh, two semitones on pitch bend. So you might want to do something a little bit less uh, dramatic. And uh, you can do that. Uh, I mean, in, in this example I'm going to try and do here. Um, I'm uh, going to try and repeat this uh, half height uh, uh, pitch bend here. Now, we now, now need to physically shift that up uh, to bring that central point around the axis. And we can do that with the V shift. And now if I rotate the phase, um, we'll get that rotated around the center point of the uh, controller lane. So there we have a, a single semitone uh, pitch bend uh, done quite accurately using the curve tool. So that just about covers the new uh, curve tool. Uh, now I want to have a look at um, shortcuts. Now uh, I'm always up for uh, adding things that simplify tasks uh, to Helium and uh, one of the new uh, additions is the ability to quickly toggle selected states of notes and controllers. Now currently the edit tool is uh, selected on the toolbar uh, and if I hit the selection tool uh, it will select that tool uh, ready for selection. But if the tool is already selected and we hit it a second time it now toggles the state of the selected note of the notes on the current track. In other words, it toggles the state from all selected, non selected, all selected, non selected, and so on. And that's an alternative to tapping and holding or long pressing on the select button and selecting the uh, select all or clear selection. And the same is true of the controller lane. We can quickly toggle states of the controllers on a track just by tapping uh, the select uh, icon. 
Now, one thing that did change in a most recent version was the uh, with the main menu because there was getting quite a lot of items within that menu itself. So I've moved a lot of the options there into a settings menu, and uh, you you can now access them from uh, a, a settings menu that stays on the screen while you adjust various settings. Um, once you've finished, you just click off that dialog to uh, to close it. But that was another requested addition. So that concludes this video. Uh, hope you found something useful in here. Uh, hope to see you soon. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.